Good morning. Uh, it's morning here in California. Uh, I don't know where you are calling from or watching the replay from, but before we get started, I just want to say that I am in the middle of a war zone. So what does that mean? I mean, on this side of the window, uh, there's construction. I mean, literally about 30 feet away, they're building an apartment complex right on this side. And then over here is a balcony. And for whatever reason, the HOA decided to paint the entire exterior and power wash all the balconies. So, <laughs> so they're using motorized spray pumps. So there's a lot of noise everywhere. I want to apologize for that. Um, so uh, as everybody knows, uh, these are recaps of each episode of the China Myth podcast, which launched two weeks ago. And episode two went live. Each episode releases on a Wednesday. And so episode three will release tomorrow. And every Tuesday, I want to do a recap because, you know, if you really care about improving your outcomes in China, if you really care about having more constructive and collaborative relationships, uh, if you really want to take more control of what you're able to manage dealing with, again, when I say you, I mean, presuming that you are uh, a Westerner, uh, if you're an American like me, when you're doing business in China, dealing people with different culture, different values, uh, different customs, um, sometimes things can get confusing and a lot of time, a lot of times things can get contentious because we have different expectations of each other. Okay. And the China Myth podcast, the goal is to really get you into uh, imagining what people are thinking when they make the decisions they make. What's going on kind of behind the scenes and how are people determining how to act, how to behave and why do they do that? Okay, so episode one was really about two characters. One was Vincent, somebody I met at a bar who ended up being a partner. And the other was Richard. Richard was uh, somebody who was uh, assigned to report to me. Uh, I was, I got hired to be the Asia Pacific sales manager in China. So I flew into China. Uh, we use the term paratrooper manager and, uh, or Kong Jiang Bu Dui. And suddenly Richard, who had been with the company for 10 years, was reporting to me, an outsider. You got to think about it in this context. German company, some kind of uh, very technical product used in cooking systems. And I'm not German. I'm not really a product expert or a technology expert in their area of expertise. I'm not even Chinese. I'm technically American, even though I speak Chinese. And suddenly he's been running the sales operations in China for 10 years. Suddenly he's reporting to me, a complete outsider and all of the challenges and all of the implications that has. So we talked about how the different stages and the different levels of Guanxi were developed in that episode one. And we introduced a couple characters. So what we really want to do is, you know, if you do business in China, there's no doubt you know what Guanxi is. There's no doubt you have your own Guanxi relationships. The question is, uh, what is your understanding of what you can do not just to improve Guanxi, but to really understand what people are thinking and make adjustments to not just improve Guanxi, but improve communications, improve collaboration, improve uh, the long-term efficacy of partnering together where you're not just in a, you know, the Chinese honeymoon period where you're new, they treat you with the utmost respect and give you face and because you're a foreigner or whatever, 
what happens after that? And if you really think deeply about it, this explains why a lot of relationships in China eventually go bad. They don't go bad because Chinese people are bad. They go bad because often we don't know how to make those adjustments beyond the honeymoon period. Okay, so the concept of this second episode, the Li Yi Guan Xi coefficient, this is really describing. So, whenever whenever anybody meets, uh, so before we get into this, so anybody on the chat, uh, feel free to uh, just say hi or post any questions that you have into the comments. The real purpose of these live streams is to answer more details because I'm sure you're listening to the podcast or you're reading it on Kindle Vela and you have questions. So the purpose of this is to really try to answer those specific questions that weren't able to be covered in a 15 minute audio podcast. Uh, so um, type those into the chat and you can type those into the chat after the live stream is ended and I will comment back uh, on the video in YouTube, okay? So what I really wanna talk about is everybody, uh, let's say when you meet a stranger, Everybody has their internal calculus, which is, okay, how am I going to interact with this person I don't know? And what am I hoping to accomplish with this person I don't know? Are we going to start a business relationship? And I'm, am I interviewing someone uh, or is someone interviewing me? Should I trust this person? Whatever it is, we all have our internal calculations. And the challenge is, if you don't have a high degree of empathy, you really are unaware of what the other side is thinking and vice versa. The other side is not aware of what you're thinking. The advantage in Western culture is we often try to be more explicit with what we're thinking. We're entering into negotiations and we just like to put all our cards on the table so the other side knows what to expect from us. Okay. But in Chinese culture, it's the opposite. People don't want to put all their calls on, cards on the table. They're not accustomed to being clear and transparent and very specific. They're not accustomed to that. And there's no advantage in doing that from where they come from. So then the question becomes, so, well, how do you really understand what they're thinking and how can I satisfy them? But more important than that, how can I manage our relationship where they don't feel uh, disrespected or they don't feel they need to extract additional value somewhere else. Uh, we call that goodwill extraction. And we talk about that in some of the later episodes. Okay. So that internal calculation that everyone makes when they meet somebody new on how they're going to behave and how they're going to approach dealing with that person there's something very similar that works in the opposite way, okay? Because Chinese culture is not explicit, people don't put all their cards on the table. And in a literal sense, people aren't really honest because we think in absolute truth, we as Westerners, so uh, we say what we think and we expect people to be honest. But in China, it doesn't work that way because the way that the Chinese mind works, it's all based on what is termed relative truth. So relative truth means it could be true in this sense, but it could not be true in this sense. And if what they're talking about is relative to something they care about, this is true. Relative to what you care about, it may not, may not be true. So what happens is, is we as Westerners often think Chinese people are dishonest, but that's because we don't understand relative truths, which will talk about later in a different episode. But anyway, so the Chinese internal calculation on how to approach every relationship. So in, in, in Chinese culture, we call every relationship the guan xi. What is the level of guan xi? It, it's just a relationship basically, but what is the level of the relationship? What is the mutual expectation of the relationship? How can we trust the other person is based on the level of guan xi. But before people engage, uh, how do they Chinese people decide what they want to offer as a goodwill? How much face do they want to give? 
Um, well, it's based on a concept called Li Yi. So Li Yi, by definition, is what is the uh, mutual interest between two parties or the mutual benefit between two parties. That's Li Yi, okay? But the translation of the meaning of Li Yi doesn't capture how to consider it when you are interacting with something else, somebody else. And the reason is this. Li Yi is dynamic. It's not static. So what we consider is the uh, mutual interest at any point in time. Okay. So what is the mutual interest at any point in time? Okay. And then we also have to consider the impact significance of our relationship. Okay. So that's projecting into the future. For example, uh, my imp the impact significance of my relationship with Richard, who was my direct report and my China sales manager, has tremendous implications. Okay. So the impact significance of our deepening relationship or guanxi over time really matters. So that will affect my Li Yi calculation, okay? For somebody like Vincent, who I met at a bar, well, there may not be any expectation that we'll do anything together in the future. So it could almost be irrelevant, okay? But the thing is, it changes. Once the guanxi with Vincent started to deepen, and we started to discuss possible collaboration and partnerships, the Li Yi changes. And when the Li Yi changes, the corresponding behavior of him towards me and me towards him will also change. So that is what is called Li Yi Guan Xi. And so these two are related. The depending on the mutual interest plus the impact significance of the relationship, not statically, but dynamically as people project or expectation. That's why, that's why, you know, you could be treated really well by someone for a short period of time, and then suddenly uh, there'll be silence. You'll call them, you can't get in touch with them. They don't reply to their messages. Why does that happen? Well, it happens because their Li Yi calculation has changed. Before they expected that you the relationship that you two would have together would benefit them significantly. But what happened was whatever you said or whatever has changed, they suddenly decided uh, this relationship is no longer beneficial for me over time. I don't really care about this guanxi. And that's why foreigners in China so often experience, you know, a great meeting, uh, a lot of communication, a lot of exchange of goodwill and information. And suddenly, when things are ready to go, you can't get in touch with the person. They're not replying to messages. They're not responding. You can't get in touch with them. Well, what happened is their Li Yi calculation has changed. They no longer believe that your Guanxi relationship will have a significant impact on their future interest or their future benefit and once that changes they will also change in how they respond okay so this is the importance of understanding this concept so i tried to describe the what people were thinking whether it's richard or whether it's vincent or whether a new character that i introduced in episode two xiao he kind of what were they thinking and how do you build on that guanxi over time to change people's Li Yi calculation? Because you got to remember, Li Yi is not static, it's dynamic. And Li Yi calculation or the variables are influenced by guanxi. So it's like a lot of moving parts. And it's mainly decided not based on facts and statistics, but it's decided based on expectations. So when you are negotiating or communicating or interviewing or just talking with someone, 
if you understand how to influence their expectations, you can actually get a different type of response. Okay. And you'll also notice on the other side, when a Chinese person is sitting across from you and they're still trying to assess what is the impact significance of our relationship moving forward, which is what is our Li Yi Guan Xi going to be, um, they are constantly, constantly trying to increase your expectations, uh, incentivize you to share more, to offer more, to give more by them kind of promising more. We talked about this, I think, in the last one about Hua Da Bing, or it could be in a later episode. I get confused now. I've already recorded six episodes, so some of the concepts uh, kind of get mixed up. But anyway, so that is the reason why you have to understand that Li Yi relates directly to Guan Xi. It also relates directly to the gray economy or the shadow economy in China. So we talked about that a lot with the story about Xiao He and how there's actually two economies in China. One is the normal economy and then one is the gray economy or the shadow economy. And most Chinese people earn a percentage of their income through this gray economy, okay? Uh, sometimes it's corrupt because we, you know, when you give kickbacks or home balls, uh, it's, we think of that as corruption, trying to bribe people to get favors, but the majority of it is not. I mean, the majority of it is just unregulated. And when it's unregulated, people have to, we talked about this in the last episode, people have to shop ban fa. That means Chinese people are very, clever and, and they know how to figure out a way to get things done, but they need to be compensated for everything they do for everyone and vice versa, which means that for anything that's being sold officially from one party to the next in the value chain or in the supply chain, there's a lot of gray areas where people will extract value. Okay. Extract is where we get the term goodwill extraction, but just understand that the Li Yi also suggests how much additional benefit, opportunities, or insight could I get from our relationship? That is the calculus that Chinese people are going through. So for example, when I was doing business in China as an expat manager or as a paratrooper manager, I gave Richard the impression that I was completely ethical and above board and I wouldn't tolerate any type of corruption or anything that might violate policy. Okay. So in his Li Yi calculation, he probably determined that, well, then the best I can do is just earn my salary and maybe my bonus by deepening Guan Xi relationships with Gene. But he may actually stop me or he may get me in trouble for doing some of the things that I'm doing on the side, right? So that's why Richard ultimately decided that um, even though he reported directly to me, I decided his salary, his bonus, signed off on his international travel, that he didn't want to deepen our guanxi. And I talked about that. You know, Vincent... And I, our guanxi deepened where we started having dinner at each other's homes and our parents met each other and we got to know his son. And so we became partners that way. My, I never met anyone from Richard's family, not his wife, not his daughter. My wife only met him once, just out of courtesy. He said, let's have dinner together because it's traditional for Chinese people to do that with people visiting. And we had dinner, just the three of us. And it was a very kind of, un-Chinese dinner, not a lot of, not a lot of drinking, not a lot of, you know, relationship building, just a very boring dinner. And that's because Richard in his Li Yi calculation, he got the, he got the impression that I would be not only not supportive of what he was doing in the gray areas, but I might actually get him in trouble. 
And that's a story that we get into in a later episode. So, so when you think about it in that regard, we always want to put more context into Guanxi. Okay, so we talked about the different levels of Guanxi. Another thing that's really important to talk about is what are the pros and cons of Guanxi? Okay, Guanxi isn't just you have more deeper Guanxi relationships and everything's going to be better. Deepening Guanxi relationships actually comes with a lot of negatives. And of course, that's what Richard was calculating when he was calculating his Li Yi. All right, so what are some of the pros of Guanxi? Well, that's pretty simple. The pros are additional benefits, additional opportunities, additional connections, inside information, favorable treatment. All of these things are kind of the expectations of Guanxi. All right. And those are the things that people really know about typically. Nobody talks about the cons. All right. So what are the negatives of Guanxi? And then this will kind of explain why certain people over time start to behave a certain differently. They'll they start ignoring you because, well, they don't care about your Guanxi anymore because of the negatives. So what are the negatives? The pro, the cons are with deeper Guanxi comes greater obligation. Okay, so if you don't want to have additional obligations to your counterparts, then you may not want to have that deep of a Guanxi relationship. Because if you don't meet your obligations, that's a loss of face, right? So Chinese people are thinking about that too. Well, if I have a deep Guanxi relationship, then I, I'm obligated to do certain things. So maybe I don't want that deep of a relationship, so I won't have that obligation and I won't lose face by turning something down, Okay. And then, of course, there are, we talk about having Guanxi will give you access to connections. Well, in the opposite direction, there's pressure, okay? The pressure of connections. That means if I need something from someone who I have a deep Guanxi relationship with, that person has to ask for goodwill from their connection to do a favor for me. And then that person will owe goodwill to the person who extended me a favor okay and sometimes you might ask something and you don't want you want to save your goodwill you don't want to use it all at once so if you have a good connection you don't want to use that connection to help everybody but if you have a, but you obligated to have everybody you do have the right level of guanxi with so these are all the negatives that come into view and in the story with richard he didn't want to be obligated to me he actually wanted to try to get rid of me, which is a tell sign from the beginning. We never deepened our Guanxi relationship beyond just the two of us. I never met his wife. I never met his daughter. I never even met any of his friends. It was all business except for the relationship between the two of us. And that is an indicator that something is wrong and he is hiding something. And we'll get into more of that. So um, so I see a couple people on the chat. Uh, would love for you to type something in the chat box. Uh, this is, um, you know, I you can't ask questions live, but you can type them into the chat and then I can try to address them. So episode two, the Li Yi Guanxi coefficient uh, talks about what we just talked about. And I didn't obviously go into that much detail. Uh, but it also talked about uh, how important it is to have, well, relationships with all different people. Like I talked about, there's the Bao An, which is the security person in front of each building. How should you develop your relationship with that person? And is it important? I think it is. Uh, it's like if you do sales here in the U.S., you should always have a good relationship with the receptionist. You know, this is traditionally before there was everything was on Zoom. But uh, you should always, if you're a salesperson, you should always have good relationships with the, with the receptionist because that receptionist can help you access people on the inside, can help you with kind of inside information. That's why good salespeople always know everybody in the organization. They bring flowers and candy and donuts to the people working at the front desk. Well, that's a very similar mindset that you have to have in China. And so the equivalent would, uh, there's a receptionist, but in each building complex, there's a Bao An, which is a state-owned 
a government state-owned employee, and they're assigned to work security and allow access in and out of certain establishments, including your apartment. Um, I, your driver. Uh, so this story talks about Xiao He, who was my kind of unofficial taxi driver who became my official personal driver, how that happened. And in the next episode, or I think the next episode, I think it's the next episode, you'll find out, you know, out of the, all the relationships that we've talked about so far, Vincent ultimately ended up being a failed partnership. Richard ended up stabbing me in the back. And while I didn't have to leave, I decided to leave. So essentially he forced my resignation. Uh, I got to, you know, I still got what I wanted out of the deal, but uh, ultimately that relationship, the Guanxi with Richard and the Guanxi with Vincent ended up being something that was either a failure or a disappointment. But my relationship with Xiao He, who was my, uh, originally he's an unofficial taxi driver or he ended up being my personal driver. And I actually extracted a lot of benefits and leverage from that relationship. And you'll hear how that happened in the next episode. But the point is, every Guanxi relationship you have in China is important, okay? So that is something that, uh, that I want everybody to pay attention to. Okay, so I see a question in the chat. What can you do when you feel the Guanxi relationship is going bad? Okay, so first of all, um, it's, <laughs> that's a good question, actually. That's an excellent, excellent question. So first of all, if you can feel the Guanxi relationship going bad, that means you are extremely, extremely perceptive and in tune with what's going on. I'll give you an example. I didn't feel my relationship with Richard was going bad until it was probably too late. And what does that mean? That means he was, he was doing everything I wanted, you know, we were playing tennis, going out, you know, he was doing every catering to my every need, the classic Chinese honeymoon period. He was doing all of that. So uh, it was a cover up behind the scenes because he had been with this company for 10 years and he had his relationships back in Germany. He was planting seeds that of two things. One, I wasn't taking my job seriously. He was planting those seeds. And two, I was mistreating some employees. So by the time my boss told me that other people were talking about me in that way, it was already too late. Okay, so why is this question a great question? Had I recognized that earlier, I could have done something about it. Okay, in hindsight, this is why it's so important to be aware, self-aware, culturally aware, and to be empathetic. So had I known then what I know now, and I had a, this different attitude, mindset, and approach, I would have treated Richard completely differently, okay? Not in a bad way, but I would have not presented myself as such an upstanding, morally, and ethically strict manager. I would have left the door open, which means that maybe give him some hints and suggestions that yes, I would be open to sharing in some gray income or hui so wu. I would be interested in maybe doing something corrupt and getting a little personal benefit. You don't actually have to do it, but you just have to leave that door open because when you leave that door open, that changes the lee calculation of the person on the other side. Because I started from day one, I'm not going to tolerate any type of unethical or corrupt behavior, his calculation immediately was, this guy is going to not be able to benefit me personally based on what I'm currently doing. So I need to be careful. I can't get in too deep of a Guanxi relationship with that person, with me. And I have to figure out how I can force this person's exit, right? Everything in China is done indirectly. So he never said anything directly to my face ever, okay? But because I had good relationships with my boss, 
uh, he could tell me what people were saying about me in Germany, which he also knew completely wasn't true because we met every week. He knew exactly what I was doing. So, uh, so yeah, this is a long winded answer, but I wanted to give more context. But when you, when you feel something is going bad, you got to be willing to shift gears and change course. And the goal of all of this is to help you not have to shift gears and change course, but choose the right course and the right approach from the beginning so the relationship can begin and develop along a positive trajectory. And if you think about that, you know, with me and Richard, our relationship was honeymoon period, honeymoon period, honeymoon period. And I never knew kind of it was going south, but it was actually going this way. And my misperception was that it was still going this way. And it wasn't until it was too late. And again, I talk about that in the later episodes. So that's a, that's an excellent question. All right. So we're right at 30 minutes. Uh, I still see two people on the call. Is there any more questions you want to add to the chat that I can kind of answer live in this recorded live stream? Otherwise, you know, all questions that are posted, I will just uh, probably just type uh, some answers in. Um, let's see if there are any other concepts. So we talked about uh, Guan Xi in the last episode, continued to this episode. We talked about Li Yi. It is basically the mutual interest plus the, ign the impact significance of the relationship moving forward. But the key point is it's dynamic and it's influenced by perceptions and expectations. Okay. So nothing has to be true or false. How other people perceive and what they expect, that is the variable that you want to try to influence if you want to try to get a better outcome. Uh, we talked about, uh, so there's a couple terms we used in this. We talked about hukou, which is the city residency permit of people living in China. We talked about laoban. Laoban is just a term that people use to give face, to treat people with respect. So if you're a foreigner, and you're doing anything, you walk into an establishment, people are going to say, Lao Ban, Lao Ban, Lao Ban. It means boss or business owner. And it, it gives people face because they're a boss or a business owner. So you hear that a lot. Um, when you're able to convince somebody to stop calling you Lao Ban, like I was able to do with Xiao He, then you know that you have a higher level of trust because now they're not looking at the relationship so much as a hierarchical obligation. They treat you more as a friend, which is always a good thing for real trust in China. And of course, there's also the ganbei, which is bottoms up drinking. We talked about the, 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 the meals that I had with Xiao He, both in his ghetto style apartment, uh, where there wasn't even enough room for everybody to sit and to having dinner where he invited his brother-in-law or brother, his family and his kids. And he treated me to a birthday dinner in Shanghai, even though he was my uh, personal taxi driver or personal chauffeur. And all of that was happening kind of uh, behind the scenes. So uh, any other questions that you want to post in the chat before I end this live stream? Uh, I still see that there's two people on. Uh, I just want to thank you for attending and the next episode will drop tomorrow. Tomorrow is a, the next episode three is a really interesting story about a bully that I encountered in China and how my relationship with Xiao He uh, gave me tremendous leverage when that happened in China. Anyway, I don't want to spoil it. Uh, subscribe to the podcast. And I will see you next week. And again, feel free to post any comments in the chat. I will answer them continuously kind of over time whenever I get notified that there's a question about a certain episode. All right. Thanks, everybody. Cheers.